Thank you so much. Good morning from Colorado time. Uh, our lecture today will be uh, Reboa. Uh, it is like the uh, new way for emergency medicine physician. Uh, and let's go now. Okay, let's go. Reboa, a new land for emergency medicine physicians. The idea itself of including the aorta to redirect blood to brain and heart is not new. It is back to the Korean War in 1954. And the idea of using aortic occlusion in endovascular uh, surgery and the intervention is not new. It's used also in another setting such as aortic aneurysm, closure, and gastrointestinal bleeding stoppage. But a new revolution actually happened in 2011. Two colonel doctor, vascular surgeon named Colonel Todd Rasmussen and Dr. Johnson Eliasson, they invented the Reboa refer to restative endovascular balloon occlusion of aorta. So it is like occluding the aorta, but in restation setting. They learned their experience from the battle war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Some development happened in 2015, and finally in 2017, they got the FDA approval for the first seven French catheter for Reboa. By the way, it's, this um, catheter is related to one of the company called the Bright Time and it's named ER Reboa. ER not mean emergency room. ER it is a trick. ER is the first initial of two inventor, Eliasson and Ra Rasmussen. Eliasson for E, Rasmussen for R. That's why it's named ER Reboa and it's manufactured by what's called Pride Time Time. It's one of the American leader uh, company in this field. After that, in 2017, we introduced the POCUS point of care ultrasound to get the arterial access very easily and fast. In 2020, there is a very famous study done by Dr. Lauren Moore, which is trauma surgeon from Texas. It includes six centers of excellency in US and the group proved like have a very good result for the catheter. Uh, uh, stop sharing or still sharing my screen. I think there is a we technical have lost, problem. We have lost your screen. OK, I will share it again. OK, let's go. OK, 
in 2020, as we told before, that's like the most famous study included six center of excellence in US and it's proved the efficacy of this catheter. In 2023, one of my colleagues, which is Dr. Alex Crowley, has just published an important paper include that Tune 1 Reboa is even good as or better than thoracotomy, which is a very important paper. Also, Dr. Zaf Qasim in 2023 published a very important paper about how training affects Reboa in L critically patient. Let's go. What's our indication for Reboa? Is it for every person? Of course not. We have to select our person or our patient very meticulously, and we have to choose the fit person for Reboa in order to get a better results. Our age range from 18 to 69 years old. It should be used in three situations. Let's count them with, with each other. It's like three situations. First of all, in traumatic arrest, in traumatic arrest. This traumatic arrest should not exceed 10 minutes from the time of arrest to get a better result. What about if it's exceed 10 minutes? We can still use, but with less proven effect. Traumatic arrest should be identifiable by ultrasound of one of two sides. First of all, subdiaphragmatic hemorrhage, which we found by ultrasounds, there is a bleeding in the abdominal organ. Second side is a pelvic injury with proven injury to pelvis or femoral vessels. So what about if we can't identify source of bleeding? It is a matter of controversy maybe use better thoracotomy with cross aortic clamping or we can go with zone one reboa we can discuss this later so first of all in traumatic arrest let's remember each other traumatic arrest then severe hypotension severe hypotension mean systolic blood pressure less than 80 or less than 70 with identifiable blood source, either subdiaphragmatic in abdomen, we use zone one, or pelvic trauma, we use three. So, in traumatic arrest or severe hypotension, this is the first two. We have also some diagrams for what we are going to, either for traumatic arrest or severe hypotension. Also, there is also some diagram and the algorithm in pre-hospital care. The good thing, even the European Society of Emergency Medicine in 2022, they approved a new guideline for advanced life support. It's including Reboa. And this is mean that in Europe also Keep in touch side by side with the American guidelines. So, what's our contraindication? Contraindication is outside the range of age, which is from 18 to 69 years old, either in a child or very older person. It's not proven yet. Not no, no more statistics or no more studies has had has been done for that. The other thing in severe comorbidities, the technique is expensive and they need a very, very trained physician. So we will not lo lose much time with comorbidities such as severe cancer or severe depleting patient. Also, if we exceed the 10 minute of cardiac arrest, it is unproven yet with many research, may use, may not. Also, identical of bleeding in the post site, subdiaphragmatic bleeding or pelvic treating. And the final one, which is all the concept, 
and now with the new research, it become more changes. Let's say again, we use Reboa in traumatic cardiac arrest first, then in severe hypotension. What is that? What about if there is no traumatic arrest, like non-traumatic cardiac arrest? Could we use or no? In old research, we said no because most of research on trauma only. But now, with two unique research, one of them came from Norway with Prede et al. Here they practice Reboa for non-traumatic cardiac arrest with proven efficacy. Also, one of my colleagues, which is Dr. James Daly and at Yale University in 2022, he got a fund from National Institute of Health and he makes some trials on using Reboa in non-traumatic cardiac arrest. The normal result with advanced cardiac life support and advanced life support, only 10 percentage with favorable neurological alive patient, which is they come to risk. With Reboa, this fold increased sixfold, so we can got a live person with favorable neurological effect six times as the usual ALS and the ACLS protocols, but the third usage is still under research. So let's say it again, Reboa indication, traumatic cardiac arrest, severe traumatic hypotension, and lastly, non-traumatic cardiac arrest. Which, which field should we use Reboa? It either in your recitation traumatic room in your ER or ED. You can use it intraoperatively as a bridge for surgery or in the interventional radiology scene, you can also use it to guide the angium uh, used in this field. Lastly, and related to England, of course, in London, it was the first trial for pre-hospital Reboa usage. This trial started in 2017, extended to 2022, and we will talk about its result at the end of this lecture. Which, what's our team? How many people we need? How many physicians we need in this field? Actually, you only need one trained physician, very, very highly qualified physician, and assistant just to help him. Or there is another rule or another protocol when we use three person. One is highly qualified, other is assistant, and the third one is the team leader who sees the whole scene and can give a decision about continue doing a reboa or deflate and go out. We have three phases for reboa. We, sh we, we should count with each other. We have three phases of reboa. What is known as pre-reboa, what is known as reboa field, and what is known as post-reboa phase. Let's start with the Reboa, the pre-reboa phase. Pre-reboa phase include two stages. First of all, to identify the femoral artery, let's say that the femoral artery is our goal. We should puncture or enter into the femoral artery. And the second thing, to introduce the arterial cheese. Both of them is pre-reboa. It is a general step, not related particularly for Reboa. We can use it in coronary angiography, like cardiology. When they do their angiography or catheter in coronary, they use this pre-Reboa phase, including identify the artery and secondly, introduce the sheath. Let's go. What's our target? Our target is the femoral artery. Is it all the part of femoral artery? No, we usually targeted the common femoral artery. Common femoral artery is three centimeters, not the external iliac, not the deep profunda, not the superficial femoral. So our target is the common femoral. So you have three centimeter to get your target, as shown in this slide. With ultrasound, everything become easy. 
We can use point of care ultrasound to identify the artery. Artery by anatomy is mid inguinal point, which means the mid point between anterior superior iliac spine down to symphysis pubis. So by anatomy, go between anterior superior iliac spine down to symphysis pubis, go to the mid inguinal point, go to centimeter below inguinal ligament, and that's your target. By ultrasound, it's become more and more easy. What is the sign in ultrasound? We will use the linear probe. Linear probe is a high frequency probe. And as we learn it from focus, high frequency probe mean low penetration, mean better resolution for superficial issues. So say it again, linear probe have a high frequency of megahertz, mean low penetration, low penetration mean high resolution of superficial items. So we will do linear probe on the inguinal region, find that triad. What should tri which triad? Triad is the Mickey Mouse triad. Mickey Mouse triad refer to saphenous vein, which is the most medial, femoral vein, which is the next, and arterial femoral artery, which is the most lateral. So the, the triad, which is Mickey Mouse triad, including the most medial saphenous vein, then femoral vein, followed by femoral artery. Our target is the femoral artery. We will enter into the femoral artery. To make it more easy, you can put some color using color Doppler, using color Doppler. And we can say now, the red color referred to is not artery. Don't make me sad. It is a matter of direction. And it is the monomeric part. Blue away, red toward. If the flow is toward our probe, it will be red in color. If the flow is away from our probe, it will be blue in color. color. Part blue away, red toward. So the femoral, femoral artery may be red, may be blue. It is not matter of which it is. It is matter of blood direction to the probe. So let's continue. We identify the artery. More thing to identify the artery. All thing can identify the artery. Just put in your mind, except for pulsation. Don't say pulsation. How come all of us knows that artery means a pulsation? Yes, that's something good for anatomy and physiology. But in real life, there is what's called transmitted pulsation. So if you depend in every case on pulsation, the vein may be pulsating and you will be cheated by that. So let's say what is the logic comparison? The artery is more thick. The artery never change with respiration. The artery by Doppler has three waves, one below, one above, and one below. And the last thing that the artery is not compressible by moderate force. Of course, it will be compressible by high force, but by moderate force, not compressible. This is like a logic comp comparison. But if you every time depend on pulsation, you will lost your artery. Let's continue. You will put your um, cannula and your cannula is either 21 gauge cannula or um, you, the usual large cannula, cannula, which is 18 gauge. You put your cannula and after you put your can, cannula, you put your wire. So simply, After you use your cannula, which is here in the, in the field, you, pull, you will put your wire. This wire to, uh, to keep the cannula in place. So once you put your cannula, you will introduce your wire. This wire will enter into the cannula. Then I will remove the whole cannula. So I have only now the wire. So I finished my first step in pre repo I identify the artery, put the cannula and they got the arterial flow. What's next? After I use this wire, I will what use what is called arterial sheath. 
Arterial sheath is something not specific for Reboa. It is something used for any arterial maneuver such, such as coronary. So in coronary also, I use this sheath. This sheath is with different size. This is called seven French sheath. For example, it's written on it. Don't, don't worry about that. This sheath is called fifth French. So it is a matter of size. All of them is written about it. Don't worry about that. So you will choose your sheath and then your wire is inside the bleeding stream. You will put now your wire inside the sheath. And get it away after you put. After you put your wire inside your sheath, this sheath is with dilator built in. Just remove your dilator, you move, remove your wire, and your sheath now is in. In the picture we saw that cannula, 18 gauge or 21 gauge, you put your wire. Then you will put your sheath. This is the sheath with the orange, maybe orange or any color. This is only the manufacturing. And after you put your sheath, you will choose, choose the next step. So your first step is your sheath and the sheath now replace the cannula and replace the wire and the sheath is in now in the arterial stream. There is a good trick about that. How to decide to use a reboa? The good thing in, seen in this slide, once you have a major trauma not responding to blood, you can decide and thinking about putting the sheath. So once the blood pressure go below 90 systolic was not responding to fluid and blood, first of all, put your sheath. We don't see Reboa. Till now, we don't see Reboa. Just put your sheath. So you will put cannula, put a wire, and then insert your sheath. We finished the two stage of the first pre-Reboa phase. Now we are going to the Reboa phase. We are now going to the Reboa phase. We have two main different types of Reboa relating to different company of manufacturing. Reboa have in its anatomy three zones. Zone one, including the area between left subclavian artery down to celiac trunk. So left subclavian artery down to celiac trunk, trunk known as zone one. This zone one related to bleeding subdiaphragmatically. So if the bleeding is thoracic, it is outside our, our scope. If the bleeding is thoracic, it is not related to Reboa. It's related to thoracotomy from start. Thoracic bleeding related to thoracotomy. Going subdiaphragmatic bleeding is related to zone one, including from left subclavian artery down to celiac trunk. Then we have zone two, from celiac trunk to the most caudal renal artery. It's seen here in the, uh, in the diagram, from celiac trunk down to the most caudal renal artery. This zone two is forbidden. You shouldn't inflate the balloon in this side at all. So inflate in zone one mean stoppage subdiaphragmatic bleeding. Zone two, never inflate. Zone three, including from the most caudal renal artery down to aort aortic bifurcation. So from the celiac trunk down to caudal, and from the renal artery down to aortic bifurcation. This is zone three. Zone three is related to pelvic injury. Let's summarize everything. Zone one, left subclavian down to celiac, including subdiaphragmatic. Zone two, from celiac trunk to caudal renal artery, never inflate. Zone three, caudal artery down to aortic bifurcation related to pelvic injuries. 
first of all, we have the first catheter, which is as, as seen here in uh, your uh, diagram. It's called bright time. This is the ER, the original ER bright time, and ER not mean emergency room. ER is the first initial of Eliason and Rasmussen doctor, which is a colonel vascular surgeon. This catheter is called, is, is taken, has two boards, one for inflating the balloon and one for arterial monitoring, has a shaft with this, with this sheath, which is orange, and peel away, peel away that you can, means that you can peel it out, out. you can peel be, this sheath out. And ending by a curved tip, this tip called P tip. P, you can rem re remind yourself with prime time. So the company is prime time. So the end is P. In another company, we, we will see another thing. So the end is P because it's prime time. How to measure your zone? You have two way of measuring your zone. Either by centimeter, roughly, zone one is 28 centimeter, and zone three is 46 centimeter. Centimeters mean from the sheath. So you will put it from sheath, like from your femoral, up to your site of occlusion. So if it is zone one, it is 46 centimeter, or if it is a zone three, it is 28 centimeter. Of course, there is a variation. This is like a rough estimate. The second thing, you can use the external landmark as here shown in this diagram. He use here the suprasternal notch as external landmark for zone one. Or you can use here the ZIFI, the ZIFI process as external landmark for zone three. So zone one external landmark, sobrasternal, and zone three, external landmark, xiphoid process. The third way that in the new catheter, there is like either one chart for zone one or three dashes for zone three. So that if it is only one dash, this means zone one. If three dashes, this means zone three. This is like different way to know which should you inflate your balloon. Now, you have your sheath and you have your balloon. How can you introduce, uh, you can introduce your ER report? In this diagram, he show you the sheath. This sheath is now in the patient with the femoral artery. I will go by the tip of this catheter and cover it cover it completely by this peel away sheath so that the, the, this peel away sheath can straighten the tip of our catheter. Once I straighten in the catheter, I will introduce it into my sheath. So the ER reboa is now introduced inside the femoral sheath. It will not go easy because it will arrest or stoppage or resist after five millimeters. After I got this resistance. I will keep the peel away sheath behind, then complete introducing this Reboa catheter inside. Once the Reboa catheter is inside the femoral sheath, I will start to use one of my two ports, which is called the balloon port. I will inflate this balloon. To how much I inflate the balloon? After I put it either in zone three or zone one, each zone have a specific amount of saline to inflate. Sometimes you can use the plain saline, or sometimes you have to mix it with 
some um, contrast. And this mixture shouldn't be less than one to four. One to four. One contrast and four saline. One contrast and four saline. You may use one to four or one to five. You will inflate your balloon. After inflation your balloon, it is logic that you will use more saline once you go to zone one and less saline once you go to zone three. According to the manufacturer, you start in zone three with the least amount, which is the two centimeter of saline. And zone one, you can start by eight centimeter. In zone three, if you start with two centimeter, you will increase, increase, increase till complete occlusion of the femoral artery. This may be target after eight centimeter, maybe after seven, maybe after six, but your start is two. In zone one, you have eight centimeter as a start, but may increase to nine, 10, 11, may reach up to 13 centimeter for saline to include whole occlusion of the artery. Once you occluded the artery, how you make like a decision that you completely occlude the artery? There are three ways to know how you occlude the artery. Either put your hand and palpate the contralateral femoral artery. You, it is logic, you close from ab above and you introduce in one femoral. So if you palpate the contralateral femoral, you will no find no pulsation because the, all the way is closed. This is one way. The other way is the X-ray. This balloon actually had a radiological landmark. And if it is go inflated like this, you will see the whole contour of the arterial occlusion by X-ray. So it is like a radiological or by uh, palpate the contralateral artery. And the third thing, you can put it on arterial monitoring. So it is like a, some sort of inv invasive maneuver to, pulp to calculate blood pressure. Either you can calculate the blood pressure by the external cuff, or you already have two ports here in this catheter, one for balloon and the other for arterial monitoring. And once you put it here in the arterial monitoring, you can measure the arterial blood pressure above, or you can monitoring below if you use the portal of cheese. Let's see about this portal of cheese. This is our cheese. We, 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 now we, we, we talk about the cheese, not the ribor. This cheese have a sideway. This sideway, if you connect it to arterial monitoring, you can measure the blood pressure below riboa occlusion. So you have two things now. By the cheese itself, you can measure from the sideway blood pressure below or what is called distal limb blood pressure monitoring. Or by the riboa itself, it has two ports. From one, you inflate your balloon, and from the other, you will monitoring the arterial blood pressure above the balloon. Let's say this is one, and once you introduce your riboa, reach it, the target of blood pressure. If he arrest, he were rusk, got a rusk, get like a, 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 a pulsation. And if he's hypotensive, he will get normotensive. Once you get that, remember always to secure your reboa by suturing because with every pulsation, this reboa going out. So to avoid getting out of this reboa, you have suture it like what's seen here in the diagram. Science never responds. And once in 2017, when Eliasson and Rasmussen invented Reboa, there come another person, and it is uh, uh, Cobra OS, which is another company called Frontline Medical Technology. And this Frontline Medical Technology is led by uh, Dr. Adam Power. And this frontline medical technology 
invent another catheter. We will not tell in detail because it's just invented in 2021 with different thing. First of all, it is only four French. The previous catheter is seven French, so it is less complication. The other thing, this is an, uh, the picture of Cascade. Have only one port, no two port, and this port for balloon. So what is the other port? There is no arterial monitoring port. Just you can monitoring either by contralateral pulse or X-ray or using the side way of your um, cheese. And this is something about how to introduce. We just get some picture in order to be familiar with this type. And this is like a short difference between two types, which one has port, which one is for French. The, the tip there is called P because it is prime time. This tip is called J because they make like a difference in order not to steal the trademark. The other thing that end had what is called reusable straightener. This steretiner is equal to the orange bill the way she's there. This is steretiner, you can put it here and straight your tip in order to introduce your reboa. We will not take much about that, but just to be familiar with reboa. We finished the pre-reboa phase, we finished the reboa phase, and let's talk about post-reboa phase. Once you put your repoa and you exceed everything and you reach your original blood pressure, you can deflate and remove. Just to make sure that you deflate each centimeter of saline in order not to lose anything. And you can manage it by manual compression. Once you remove the sheath and you, you remove your catheter, just compress. For how long should I compress? There is a like equation, it is the three time of French. So if it is seven French, you can compress to 21 minutes. If it is four French, you can compress to 12 minutes. But actually in real life, it depends on your clinical sense. Just make the patient no bleed and you can discharge him after that. Okay, now you remove everything, you make the compression and what is the adverse effect? This is the most important. Our main enemy is the ischemia. If you inflate zone one more than 30 minutes, you may expect ischemia after that. If you inflate zone three more than one hour, you can expect ischemia after that. Also, once the patient got high pressure, if you deflate at once, like deflate very rapidly, he, the patient will collapse. This is very logic. So you have to be gentle, well experienced, well trained in order to deflate side by side or increase attention, like not huge amount, like for small, small, and you can get your target. Okay, this complication, how can we, we come out of that? New invention, new development have developed. We have Two technique. First of all, we, previously we talk about the reboa, but now about technique how to introduce reboa. Actually, why you occlude completely? You can do what's called a P reboa, just partial, just reach your target blood pressure up, at, at the upper limb without fully occluding the lower limb. Why you cause ischemia to lower limb? No need. The second step is called intermittent. Just inflate the balloon, everything is okay. Deflate the balloon and go on. Rebleeding happen. Okay, inflate again and deflate again. So it is wave of inflation and deflation. First technique called partial reboa, second technique called intermittent reboa. This is a very important thing, and this is pictures got from my professor, Professor Dr. Ernst Moore. You should like using the tourniquet. Right, every time when you introduce the reboa, which limb is introduced, you write it in the patient, on the note, on everything, even on the wall, in order to remember not to forget that time you introduced the reboa. This is a very new invention it's in 2023, what's called the P-Reboa Pro, like Max Pro in iPhone. 
Piri Power Pro is is a Reboa manufacturer and designed to give a partial occlusion, not fully occlusion. We already use it in my hospital and also eight hospital of excellency, and this will be broadcasting outside US in very near. Last thing, you can what's use what's called Reboa bundle to follow up. At the scene and six hour after, test your heart, troponin, test your kidney, creatinine, test with LDH, pilorobin, your liver, test coagulation, test your pancreas, bilibase. After 20 hours of removal, your catheter, test your vessels by doing doublex, always test and follow up. Now, we finish our US uh, trial and our S experience. It is like a fairy tale. It is something imaginary or it is in the real life. Yes, it is in the real life. You can find here in Tantinelli box, in Rosen box, in Trauma box, all of them, they mentioned Reboa. So it is not a fairy tale or something in, in our mind. It is something in the real life. Here, our kids, we use Sonar, and this is our crash card with the Reboa well prepared. This is our protocol adopted from 2017. So we already doing Reboa, not just talking about it. So our big debate. What is called UK Reboa? UK Reboa, as we told that London is the first town or the first England's first country to introduce the pre-hospital Reboa. And these studies include about 90 patients started from 2017 up to 2022. But in the Twitter, it is a preliminary result was published by Dr. Karim Brohi. This result, Say something against. Say that Reboa may increase the mortality in 90 hours, uh, 90 days, or may uh, increase the three hour mortality, or even delay the definitive care. This result is not uh, uh, ending, not the paper published yet. It is just like a preliminary thing. And once Dr. Karim published this on Twitter, Many doctors in the US and even in the world study to negotiate and debate. Dr. Zaf Qasim, one of the pioneer and uh, godfather of emergency medicine, Reboa, he have just a published conversation in the 2nd of July, this 2nd of July, about what is the defect in this study or what may be the weak point in this study. First of all, you should like Pay attention to the time of introduction and time of removal. You will be like over, over, and well qualified in practicing Reboa. Third thing, Reboa is just a bridge. It is a not definitive a treatment. Once you did a Reboa, the following thing, either to do a surgery, do pelvic binder, or doing angiography and intervention radiology. This is just a bridge. Also, practicing in pre-hospital, field is differ a lot from practicing in hospital or will equip maneuver. Thank you so much for your attendance and practicing and waiting for your nice question. Thank you so much.